Good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll be starting just in a little bit. If you want, you can grab your bowl of water and your candle for your home altar area, home worship space area. And we got some announcement slides for you. So here's some announcements. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, we've got a couple announcements I want to go over with you. Kids time is at 10 a.m. Uh, you're going to need rice or dry beans, uncooked rice, uncooked beans, um, dry beans, not a can of beans, and toilet paper tube or paper towel tube and some masking tape. So you'll need all of that stuff. Don't use cooked rice. Don't use cooked beans. It'll just be gross. So don't do that. So June 28th. We'll be doing another parking lot worship. So join us the 28th. That's the last Sunday of this month, uh, the Sunday after Father's Day. So does that mean Father's Day is this next Sunday? The 21st. Yeah, so it's next week. Yeah. Father's Day is next week, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this is, Sarah, I'm sure, has, oh, yeah, we already sent all the stuff for our father, so I don't even have to think about that. This, this is why I keep her around. <laughs> yeah. Help exactly. me with that sort of stuff. So. Yeah. Speaking of cards, uh, it is Rusty and Lynn Connie's 45th wedding anniversary this month. So uh, they would love to be able to throw a huge barbecue for everyone, but with the COVID stuff and Lynn's health, it's just not in the works. So, But they would love you to send them cards. So please send cards to them for their anniversary this month. If you don't have the address, it should be in your directory. And if you can't find that, you can't find it, give the church office a call and they'll have the address there for you. So, Offering options as always, mail in your check, drop it off at the church office. There's an offering plate right inside the church door. You can sign up for Give Plus, our online giving. We appreciate everyone who's been doing that and everybody who has been giving. So thank you so much. Any other announcements this morning? I don't think so. Okay. Sarah's here, so say hi, say hi Sarah. Hello, good morning everyone. Yeah, so. Oh, we will begin our worship then by lighting our candles. So. We light this candle which represents the light of Christ entering our homes, uniting us as we are. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. Director's work in the back. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusted in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we, we confess, confess that, that we, we do, do not, not trust, trust your, your abundance. abundance. And we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your own creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. 
Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to take this time to take a small moment to make the sign of the cross upon your foreheads as a sign of forgiveness. We will continue now with our opening hymn, He Leadeth Me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened, opened the way for, for us and brought us to yourself. yourself. Pour your, your love into our, our hearts, hearts that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Gospel reading is from the ninth and 10th chapters of Matthew. The mission of Jesus' followers is to continue the mission of Jesus himself. Here, Jesus instructs his first disciples as to how they might proclaim the Gospel through their words and deeds. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. 
You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandal or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. The, Holy, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. Christ. So this text I always sort of think about as the disciples' internship training, the sort of uh, testing time where Jesus is seeing how they're going to do. Um, Jesus has looked around after he's healed a whole bunch of people, and he sees all this huge crowd, and he goes, there's a lot of stuff that can be done, and I'm only one person, and there are a lot more people than I can uh, touch and heal at this exact moment. So, I mean, he even says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So Jesus thinks, well, it's time to get some more laborers. And so he sends the 12 disciples out, telling him to, as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near and cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. And then the text gives us this list of, of the names of the 12 disciples. And I gotta admit, whenever there's a long list of names in the Bible, I usually just sort of skim the names and wait until the story's done and then I move on to the actual parts of the story instead of reading this what looks like a rather boring list of names. Um, and for the most part, that's what they are when you're looking through the Bible and you see this huge list of names. It's just a record of who was there. It's just a record of the names of the people of that time. But sometimes there is more reason for keeping those names in the text than just record keeping. Like if you look at the very first part of Luke or Matthew, we have this genealogies that they give us of who Jesus' ancestors were. And we learn from that a whole bunch of more stuff than just a random list of names. We learn that Jesus is of the tribe of David. But we also have women mentioned that normally you wouldn't find in a genealogy. And they're all very important women who have other stories in the Bible. And so we see this theological statement there that there is more to the story than just a list of names. So when we look at this list today, we have the same sort of thing. I think there's more to it than just here's some names. So we read Simon, known as Peter, his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon of the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. The first four we know fairly well. Um, we have good call stories that we like to talk about with them. They're the four fishermen who are on the side of the shore and Jesus shows up and he tells them, stop fishing for fish. Instead, I want you to fish for people. We know that story. Uh, Philip and Bartholomew show up after Jesus is going to be baptized by John and they were followers of John and they hear Jesus when Jesus comes there to be baptized and they wonder who he is and he talks to them and they talk to him and then they start following him. Thomas, we don't really have all that much background. He just sort of shows up in these lists. Uh, Matthew is a tax collector. Uh, he has a story about he is a tax collector that Jesus calls. Yes, Sarah's giving me a thumbs down, which is true. Most of the people probably wouldn't like him because mm -hmm. being a tax collector at that time meant he was a Jewish person 
working for the Romans who were occupying, and his job was to go take money from you to keep some for himself so he would be rich and then give the rest to the Romans who we don't like. So, Matthew, tax collector, boo. Uh, James, we have another James. Um, we don't really know much about this James besides it's a different James than what we already heard, the brother of um, James and John, different James. And it's also, a, we think, a different than James, the brother of Jesus, who's one of Jesus' brother who becomes a leader of the church. I think it's a different James. It could be the same James. We don't know. There's, that's the problem with the Bible. We don't have all the background of everything that's in it. Then we have Thaddeus. Uh, Thaddeus is also sometimes called Jude, if you look at other Bible passages, or even Judas Thaddeus, um, depending on what gospel you're looking at or the book of Acts you're looking at. Uh, he is sometimes actually also referred to as Thaddeus the Zealot, and that connects him with the next person on our list, who in this text is called Simon the Cananean, but he's also referred to as Simon the Zealot. Uh, zealots are a group of people in Jesus' time who, a religious group, and they are bent on overthrowing and kicking out the Roman occupying force of that time. And then finally you get Judas Iscariot, the one to betray Jesus. So you look at this list and you see how different they all are. Um, I think in our, the assumption often is, is that they're all fishermen. Because we have a lot of fishing stories. So we go, oh, all of the disciples of Jesus were fishermen guys. And it's just not how it actually is. They come from all of these different backgrounds. I mean, some of their backgrounds are so different, You're sort of, it's sort of amazing they are in the same group together. I mean, we talked about Matthew, the tax collector who worked for the Romans. And then you got Zealots, Thaddeus, and Simon who want to violently overthrow the Romans. The first few weeks together probably would have been a little interesting as they started learning who they are. Like, oh, I work for the Romans. Oh, we want to kill all of them. So, meh, probably a little tension there at first. But they still all worked together and they all became disciples together. And Jesus sends them all out together. Uh, this last week, uh, we had council meeting on Tuesday night, and I read a devotional for council based on 1 Corinthians. It is the 1 Corinthians passage that talks about all the different gifts we have. And the person who wrote the devotional is talking about all the gifts that are needed. That They used the example of a play. All the different gifts that are needed to put on a play. You need set people. You need the actors. You need directors. You need lighting people. You need all these different people with all these different backgrounds and different gifts to get the play done. Well, that's the same thing with how the church works, that we need people of all kinds of different backgrounds and all kinds of different understandings and gifts and skill sets to be the church in the world. Jesus could have called all fishermen he could have called a group of 12 fisher guys, and it probably would have worked. It's Jesus. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus picked people from all kinds of different backgrounds. Because we all come from all kinds of different backgrounds. And a guy who's a tax collector is going to relate to other people who are tax collectors better than a zealot is going to relate to those tax collectors. A fisher guy is going to relate to people different than somebody who works in construction. You need all of these different people to make the church work. To be the world, to, to be the church who's sent out into the world as this text is doing, and then we look at what our text from last week from Matthew was from the very last chapter. It happens to be my confirmation verse of go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. To be the church that's sent out like that to all people in all places, 
you need people of every skill that I can't do it by myself. Sarah can't do it by herself. You can't do it by yourself. But together, then we can do it. Then the question is, what are we called to do? What does it mean to make disciples of all nations, like Matthew says? What does it mean to tell the good news that the kingdom of heaven has come near, like our reading today says? What does it mean to be people who love the Lord your God with heart, soul, and body and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself, as Jesus calls the new commandment? or the greatest commandment, and then the new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. What does it mean to be called to do all of that? Our hymn of the day is going to be an African-American spiritual called There is a Balm in Gilead. The refrain goes, there is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Uh, the first time this uh, spiritual was first written down in paper form, or recorded paper form at least, was in 1854, so even before the uh, Civil War. But it's probably even older than that because most spirituals are very old and they were songs that were sung by slaves in the field is where most of them came from. This one you f we find, I find at least especially poignant. Um, the psalm is a reference to the text of Jeremiah 8.22 that has a reference to there being a balm in Gilead. But then Jeremiah the prophet is wondering, why isn't this balm of Gilead being used to heal the Jewish people? Because Jeremiah is saying, you're not using this balm. Instead, you're going against God's ways. You aren't following what God wants you to do. And the people of Jeremiah's time have taken to worshiping idols. And Jeremiah is saying, you need a balm because you need to change your ways. And the slaves are singing this in the fields and hearing this and they're seeing there's a balm that can heal us too then. That this work in the fields as slaves is not the end. God is more powerful than this. God will give us this balm. The good news for them was that even in our slavery, God will heal and comfort us. That's what we're called to do in this world. To go out and tell people the good news that there is a balm in Gilead. A balm for whatever ails them. That God's presence is with them in each moment. And we don't do this alone. We do this together with each other and with God final verse of the song we sing today is if you cannot preach like Peter if you cannot pray like Paul which most of us can't preach like Peter and can't can't play bleh, can't pray like Paul it's a lot of P words in there yeah it says you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all you can tell people there is a balm for them you don't need to be somebody who you aren't to be a disciple of God. You don't need to change who you are and learn new things to be a follower of Jesus. And God has already called you in your baptism, washing you clean and claiming you as a beloved child, making you a permanent part of the body of Christ, the church. So church time to go out there and tell people there's a balm for them given to you and to all of us through God. Amen. Get that page out of here. <laughs> I might cut that part, I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> okay, our hymn of the day, as I already told you, is There's a Balm in
We'll continue now with our prayers. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us join together to pray for the church, our nation, and all who are in need. O God, the Holy One of blessing, send your spirit of tender might throughout your church and to all leaders, especially Bishop Eaton. Strengthen the believers who cannot assemble for worship. Guide the church's use of technology and make yourself known to those who have no access to such materials. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. O God, the Holy One of Truth, as today we commemorate the 4th century theologian Basil, Gregory, Gregory, and Marquina, we pray for your spirit on teachers, preachers, and missionaries. Empower the church as it uses both historic and innovative words to proclaim your gospel across the street and around the globe. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. O God, Holy One of creation, continue your care for the earth. Where there was fire or flooding, drought or storm, bring renewal of the land. Bless farmers and ranchers and protect migrant farm workers as they toil in the sun to harvest our food. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. O God, Holy One of Unity, as we commemorate this week the martyrdom of the Emmanuel Nine, who in 2015 were killed while assembled in their Charleston church for Bible study, we pray, end the scourge of racism and white supremacy, protect protesters, halt those who intend violence, preserve our democracy, raise up leaders who model repentance and reconciliation, and support legislators who seek justice in our land. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. O God, Holy One of compassion, heal the sick and embrace the fearful. Visit the millions who are suffering from the coronavirus. Protect us from another wave of disease. Uphold healthcare workers and medical researchers as they work on our behalf. Assist the unemployed in finding a job. Show us how to provide safe housing and daily food for the homeless in our nation and around the world. We pray also for those we name here. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. O God, Holy One of hope, sustain those who cannot endure their suffering but are led only to despair. Pour your grace into their hearts. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. God of peace, we call upon you to bring peace to our world, to end hatred and anger that lead to violence. Be with and keep safe all in harm's way. We pray especially for all those serving in our military. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. God of blessing, we lift up the blessings of this community. Today, we lift up Dakota, Ray, Lisa, Lincoln, Brody, Laura, and Caitlin, who have birthdays this week. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. God of life, you bring comfort to us in our need. Be with all who fear and are anxious about coronavirus. Be with nurses and doctors, CNAs and therapists and be with all those in our community working to continue to feed and care for us at restaurants, grocery stores, and general stores, clinics, and first responders. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. God of mercy, we call out to you with the prayers of our hearts. Be with Jaylee, Carrie, Dan, Patsy, Caitlin, Scott, Sharon, Wendy, Jean, Margaret, Lynn, and Steve. O oh God, Holy Eternal One, we praise you for the lives of all the faithful departed, both the famous and the forgotten. At the end of all things, bring to yourself all your treasured people to abide in your presence forever. 
your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those desires too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy it will be done, done on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. Please take a moment to share the peace with each other in your homes, and I also invite you to share the peace with one another by typing it to each other in our chat. Peace be with you. Peace to you. Peace be with you, everyone. Tap, 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 tap. And here's some offerings of peace to you digitally. So, here we go. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Yum, 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 yum. Let's honk our horns for peace today. I think that's fun. No more peace. Too loud. <laughs> we continue now with our offering prayer, so let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Our sending song is Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling. in peace Christ is with you thanks, thanks be, be to God. God have a great week everyone bye take care everybody